Look at all this mess. Everything unorganized and in shambles. A tray of bits and CNC tools on the tabletop. And then there's this. A complete eyesore of scrap wood and boxes of supplies. I think I need to build something for that space to organize this stuff a little bit better. So I'm going to measure out this area and see what size chest I'm going to build. Uh, the dimensions of the chest are going to be 22 and 3 quarter inches wide by 21 and a quarter inches tall. And I'm going to make it about 14 inches deep with an eighth inch to a quarter inch gap around the outside. I'm not going to screw it down or anything because there's going to be some dead space behind the chest, so I want to be able to move it if I need to. Now I'm planning on spending as little as possible on this project, so I'm going to come out here to my storage connects, move a bunch of gardening crap out of the way to get to some reclaimed mahogany back there in the corner and build this project out of that. This wood really didn't need much milling. I just ran it through the planer just to get rid of the old finish and then the drum sander and I brought it down to about 11 sixteenths of an inch. Here I'm just cutting a piece of scrap 5 8 inch ply to 21 and 3 8 inches by 14, then cutting off 11 16 of an inch for the facing piece of mahogany that I'm going to put on. This is going to be on the bottom of the cabinet, so it's really not going to show. Nobody will ever see it, plus it's going to get all roughed up. Now that I have the boards milled to about 7 inches wide, I'm going to cut them to rough length. Two of them at 23 inches and four at 21 and a half inches. Then I'll be ready to do a panel glue up. These panels will make the sides and the top of the chest. At this point, I didn't know it yet, but I just made my life a whole lot harder than it needed to be by using water on very dry wood to clean my glue squeeze out. So here's the result of all my effort, folks. All my panels were cupped, and I'm too stubborn to start over. So I'm going to try a different route. So here it is. I sprayed down all the panels with water on both sides, stickered them, clamped them flat, and waited 24 hours. I hope this will work. Probably not, but it's worth a try, right? 24 hours later. Well, that one turned out okay. But the other two, not so hot. Look at this. That's as crooked as a potato chip. Look at that. The other one's not any better. Well, I guess I'm going to have to work with what I got. I believe I can straighten these out, or at least make them usable. This project's becoming full of all kinds of little challenges. So there's cracks running down the side of the side panels here. So I'm going to use the CNC to make some bow ties. Considering this project is for the CNC and all that stuff, might as well use it in the project, huh?
You know, I've heard some say using a CNC machine isn't real woodworking. I'm going to stir the pot here a little bit and have to disagree with that. Take these bow ties for instance. They only took me about 45 minutes to program, cut the pockets, and the bow ties for a perfect fit. Whereas if I had done them by hand, which by the way I have done in the past, it would have taken me quite a bit longer. As far as I'm concerned, it's just another tool in the toolbox. Just like a table saw or a hand plane or even a Festool domino. Except this tool acts like another person in the shop, working all the while I'm getting something else done. Then there's the artistic side of things. I am no artist, that's for sure. I can hardly draw a stick man, much less carve or make an inlay of an animal or a flower. But the CNC does this with such ease, it amazes me that this technology is even available to us. So it inspires me to try new things with my craft, so I'll continue using it because it's fun and it makes me happy. And in the end, that's all that really matters. And here I am using another one of these jigs that I just absolutely love. It's the Lee Dovetail Jig. I'm not sponsored by Lee or anything, but this sure does make doing a whole bunch of dovetails a lot easier once you get it set up. Well, that was a screw up. As you can see, this tail is bigger than this tail. So this gap right here wasn't supposed to get cut. Uh, I have spacers for these, but of course I didn't pull them out. I figured I could do it without this. Well, that's the result of being lazy. Anyway, I'll fill it in. Uh, yeah. Oops. So as I'm doing this dry fit up, you can see the cup in the board there. I figure some glue and some clamps as I'm putting this thing together will uh, suck that all flat and uh, should be good to go after that. And here I'll use the table saw sled to trim down the sideboards to their final dimensions. And now to fix that pesky dovetail tail that has gone missing. Well, I thought I had matched up the wood grain and the color a little better than that, but I guess not. It's shop furniture, and you'll really never see this where this is going. So, it is what it is. Now I'll be cutting the drawer dividers and the bottom boards to finish dimensions. I'll use a dado to secure the drawer dividers and pocket screws for the bottom panel so I can move it if need be. I'll also be edging these boards with a piece of mahogany to make them look pretty. I don't want to look at ugly old plywood on the finished piece.
I went ahead and cut these dados at a full cut of 3 16 inch deep. I used the router because as we should all know by now, my side panels are cupped and I wanted a consistent depth. Alright, here comes the stressful glue up. It's even more stressful because I decided to glue up everything at once. But I got it done without too many problems, except nothing seems to have turned out square or flat. Oh well, I'm too deep into it now to stop or give up. I'll make it work. You'll see. Here I'm cutting a quarter inch rabbit using a rabbit bit to accept the back panel. I'm clamping a scrap piece of 2x4 on the sides to give the router support as I cut because trying to balance a router moving at 6000 RPM on a 5 8 edge just sucks. I'm cutting out the back panel here, and if you're asking yourself, why isn't Tim using a fence? Well, like I said, after glue up, the case wasn't exactly square, so I cut it freehand to get the angles right. It's only 3 16 ply, and I'm comfortable doing this, but I would suggest if you're not comfortable doing something one way, find another. There's always another way to do something.
Now it's time for the drawers. I used 3 quarter inch pine and cut it down to rough size first. Then ran it through the joiner to get a flat face and an edge and then through the planer and then through the drum sander to get a good consistent thickness before resawing on the bandsaw. Then back to the drum sander for a board of a quarter inch thick. I decided to use box joints for the drawer backs, so I made this quick box joint jig and it made box joints quick, easy, and accurate. Wonder how many times I can say box joints. I didn't realize saying box joint jig was such a tongue twister. Go ahead, try saying box joint jig three times fast. Those turned out nice and tight. I do need to trim down the sides a bit and even everything out, but we'll get to that here pretty quick. I'm gonna trim the drawers out on the table saw. I had to take off about a sixteenth of an inch on all three drawer sides. I cut these boards oversized in the first place just for this reason. It's easier to take wood off than it is to add it back on, that's for sure. So this shelf's bent and uh, I didn't notice it until afterwards. So in order to make the back piece and the front piece for this drawer and this drawer, I need some sort of a template to draw out the bend and I'm just going to shape the wood to that shape so it comes and goes. It's not real noticeable unless, you're, unless you point it out. So, this is going to be my template. I've got it evened up with the bottom corner there and the bottom corner there. And I got it clamped on as you can see. And I'm just going to do my best to trace a line back there. Try to get a good mark back there. All right, let's see how that turned out. I'm curious myself. So, and then there's my there's my shape. I'll bring you over here and let you see what I'm talking about here. So it's kind of subtle, but it's this, this one right there. You can probably see it, but there is an arch to it. And I think if the camera will focus, good grief. Well, goodness gracious. There. You can kind of see an arch in there, but it's going to play havoc if I do things square. So this is my solution. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the template on a bandsaw, being sure to cut close to the pencil line, not on it. Then sand to the line with the belt sander. 
Cut the drawer front to an oversized dimension, then double stick tape the template to the drawer front and use a flush trim bit on the router for a nice clean cut. Then I'm going to lose the footage somehow of showing all you guys how well it fits. Here I'm just breaking down a quarter inch sheet of ply to get it ready for drawer bottoms. Here I'm using a single dado blade set at a height of 3 16 to cut the dado that will be accepting the drawer bottom. Now that all the inside of the drawer boxes are done, it's time to tackle the drawer faces. I had to make each one individually due to the wonky nature of the carcass. But here I have to make another template so that the bottom drawer face will fit the slight curve of the drawer divider here, just like the drawer above except opposite. This time you'll all get to see the nice tight fit because I didn't lose this footage somewhere in computer land. Here I'm marking out where to cut the rabbits and the dados for the drawer sides and the bottoms to slip into. I'll be using the table saw for this.
Now it's time to let the old CNC do something again. I had no idea how I wanted to embellish these drawers, so I went with something simple. I numbered them one through four, but I forgot to push record on drawer number four. Time for the almighty glue up of the drawers. These went pretty smooth and uneventful, but I did have to do them one at a time due to a lack of clamps. But I did get them done eventually. Wanted a little bit of something to just kind of not make this thing look too boxy. So I put a small 45 degree chamfer all the way around the edges. Again, it's not going to really be seen, but I'll know it's there and that just makes me feel good. for the finish. I chose to use Danish oil for this project because in the end it really is just shop furniture but I can add it back on real easy if it gets worn somehow. I was a bit skeptical of how the wood would turn out but after applying the finish I really like the way it popped. So there we have it, a tool chest for the CNC machine. I'm really happy the way this thing turned out. I really like the mahogany, uh, even though these two drawers are a different wood grain and color from these two drawers, really doesn't matter. It shop furniture, I used kind of what I had laying around. Uh, when I originally built this table, I left this space open just for this, but things got in the way, other projects got in the way, life got in the way and I never got around to it. And about a week or so ago, I was looking at this going, man, I cannot handle this clutter anymore. So this is what I wound up doing, and I'm really glad that I did. I really like the way it turned out. I like the uh, ease of getting to all my tools, uh, all, my, all my spare parts and stuff. I really like it. I'm glad that I built it. Uh, there were some challenges along the way. Uh, as you saw in the video, some of them that I'll point out is the sides were cupped and uh, they had wound up cracking. I tried everything I could to get them flattened out, just didn't happen. 
And then when I went to glue them onto the sides uh, with the dovetails and everything and clamped everything down, I could not get the whole box to square up as hard as I might have tried. Uh, so it wound up looking like kind of like the top part of an hourglass. So the top part was wider than the bottom part. And uh, everything was measured and, and I don't know what happened there. I have no explanation. Uh, it wouldn't fit in this space when I first got it out of clamps either. And uh, I leveled out the bottom and then I wound up taking a hand plane and planing off a little bit of the width from the top here and uh, it fits. Uh, so those are some of the challenges that I had to overcome as well as this uh, uh, spacer down here towards the bottom uh, being not flat as well and having to make a template to, uh, to make the drawers fit in there properly. Everything slides and opens. Uh, no, I didn't use drawer slides. Uh, this is kind of a small box, you know, for drawer slides, but everything seems to open and close just fine. Uh, probably going to put a little bit of uh, beeswax down on the bottom so that it, it's, they slide a little bit better. But other than that, I'm very happy with it. If you guys liking my build videos and uh, you want to see more, please feel free to hit that subscribe and like button. And, uh, you know, if you have any questions or comments, uh, I'll try to get back with you guys as soon as I possibly can, and as soon as I see the comments, I try to answer as many uh, comments as I can. Uh, feel free to leave them down below in the comment section. And with that, you guys keep working in the shop.